Here's everything you need to know about flying with a VOR and intercepting radios like you Trayvon Diggs. Let go! Boom! Learning how to fly using your VOR is not only something that you're going to use to get through your pilot journey and pass your check ride, it's also something great to have in your toolbox for real world flying, particularly if there's any type of glitch or anything going on with satellites. Always having to back up navigation tools and thoroughly understanding how to utilize them can be incredibly valuable to you. A, VOR simply stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range. The name itself kind of gives you an idea of what this device is all about. Very high frequency. It operates on a high frequency. High frequencies can be picked up for a long extended period of time, usually in a straight kind of line. It's omnidirectional. That means, of course, it's 360 degrees. In all these 360 degree angles, it can be picking up that signal that is reflecting from that VOR. And then of course, range. It does have a range, which means to you that you can be out of range of the VOR, particularly if you're not close enough yet for it to be picked up. So that's kind of the name itself, VOR, giving you an idea of what this device is all about. If you ever flown around in your local area or looked at your sectional chart and noted where the VORs are, as you were doing some of your flight training, you May have noticed them on the ground it simply looks like basically a bowling pin it looks just like a little bowling pin on the ground and of course usually located in some sort of field or pasture out in the out in the open and then it just think about that omnidirectional so it has that frequency that very high frequency just breath blasting out from every angle 360 degrees around that is your vor and that is a very nice device Again, ground reference on the ground that can be used as a nice nav aid. So that's what it looks like on the ground. What does it look like when you're in the cockpit inside the airplane and how can you connect to that device on the ground? And that's what it's all about when you're tracking on that VOR and using that course navigating using those VOR aids. So inside of your cockpit, you're gonna have a couple different devices. You're gonna have that VOR dial that you can connect and move and maneuver around. And then you also, of course, on your comm box, gonna have a place where you can navigate and punch in a VOR code. So all you would simply do was go to your sectional and look at, of course, the VOR that you wanna fly to. Let's just say the VOR that you wanna fly to, they give you a frequency of 112.1. So you would punch that number in, of course, into your nav A, and you would switch over to your nav A and begin to see exactly where it is on your, on your comms and on your nav system. Once you do that, you wanna hit the identifier button and make sure you're good there. And when you hit that identifier button and you tune into that nav A, you should hear some sort of Morse code that's in correlation to the exact same Morse code that you're noting on your sectional chart. When you look at that VOR and it gives you that, it's gonna have these little lines, long line, maybe a short line, then another long line. That is a Morse code, taking it all the way back, baby. And you're going to hear that dee, 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 giving you that beautiful Morse code when you have that frequency tuned in. So you got the frequency tuned in, you have the identifier, you all are in a good place. So before you do anything else, now you want to hit that CDI button and you want to make sure you're good there. This is very important. This CDI button stands for Course Deviation Indicator. Standard, when you look at your nav aid, it may be on GPS. You're getting ready to use the VOR, so you wanna make sure you hit that button and it switches to VLOC to indicate that now it's operating and functioning off the VOR. So you wanna do those things first before you even start messing around with buttons and finding your bearing or your radio or whatever you're doing. You all first wanna make sure you've identified the right frequency for the VOR that you're intending to travel to and to intending to navigate to, you wanna hit that identify button, you wanna check that Morse code and to make sure it's picking up that right one that's correlating to what you're seeing on the sectional. That gives you an idea that it's in working order and it's the right identifying VOR that you're traveling to and then you wanna hit that CDI button. Once you've done those things, now you're ready to play around and have some fun with that VOR. Let go! Hey, so let's look at the dial itself. So when you look at that dial itself, one of the first things you want to determine is, are you going to the VOR or are you traveling from the VOR? So in this case scenario, let's just say we're going to the VOR because we're using the VOR as one of our checkpoints, let's say on a cross country flight or as part of our flight plan. So we're traveling to the VOR. If you're traveling to something, just think about bearing down on something. Like if you're bearing down on something, that means that you were going forcefully and intimidating into something, that bearing down on something. So you're going to something versus radial, things radiate from things. 
radiate from the sun, radiate from everything else. So whenever in terms of verbiage and of jargon, think about bearing down or think about radial in terms of going from. So if you're going to, you're going to be picking the bearing in terms of where you're going from. And inside of your dial, there's going to be a nice to and from selection. It's noted right there. So all you're going to do is turn your knob until you get to the to section. And then you're going to watch that needle. That needle may be fluctuating all over the place. But all you want to do is turn it and turn it until you can get it nice and centered. And once you have it nice and centered on the point in the two section with the two flags showing, then read what the heading says. And let's just say the heading says it's 270. So then what would you do? You would look at your heading indicator and you would fly a heading of 270. And that by simply just doing that, it will take you right to the VOR that's located on that ground reference. Nice and simple. A hey, boom. Whenever you think about flying VOR and flying to a VOR, always think about flying through the station. It's going to give you a better idea of what you're actually doing. Let's just say you were right here and you were flying. This is the VOR station and you were on that 270 heading. You're going to be flying through the station to go there and everything is going fine. But let's just say that course that you keep and keeping that needle right in the middle. If the needle just happens to drift off a little bit to the right, what would you do? You would correct the plane to the right. If it drifts off a little bit to the left, you would correct the plane to the left. Just bring it gradual movements, no jerking. Let the plane do the working. Just gradual movements to keep the needle in the center because that's going to keep you on the VOR course of 270 that you're flying. That's all you're doing, nice and simple. Now, where it gets a little bit complex, let's just say there's a wind blowing in. And let's just say that wind is coming in, it's cutting from the side, and it's pushing you off course. Then instead of on your heading indicator flying a pure 270 heading, you may have to adjust that a little bit to correct for the wind. Hey, boom! You may very well have to fly a heading of 280 or 290, just depending on how strong the wind is, just to keep everything straight and to keep that VOR needle in the middle, simply because you're correcting for the wind that's trying to blow you off course. So always be aware if you're flying VOR in a strong wind situation or if it's in calm wind situations, how either difficult or easy it could be to stay on course and keep that needle in the middle. Let go. Boom. One of the key things to understand about the VOR ground reference on the ground when it's blasting off that omnidirectional frequency, it's not concerned with what heading you're flying, the aircraft. It's only concerned with blasting off these omnidirectional frequencies and which one of those frequencies is making contact with your aircraft to pick you up. That's all it's concerned with. And here's how you want to make sure you thoroughly understand that. Let's just say this was you flying right here near this VOR. But the nose of your aircraft is pointed more towards in this northerly kind of direction, say a heading of 340, just like that, right? Okay, cool. That may be your heading at that time, but while you were trying to pick up your signal in the very beginning. But the frequency that actually touched and made contact with your aircraft is more like 270. So that is the reading that you're going to get when you punch on 270, not what heading you're flying what heading those that frequency is making contact with your aircraft and it's trying to let you know fly this course to come directly to the VOR. So understand the difference between the heading that you may be flying and where the VOR frequency is picking up and making contact with your aircraft on the ground. Let go! Boom! So check it. Let's just say you were asked to intercept a radio. You can be asked to do this by your designated pilot examiner, your flight instructor, ATC, for any particular reason. Let's just told, say they told you to intercept radio 180 on the VOR that you're flying to right now. Okay, so you want to intercept that thing. Intercept that thing like Trayvon Diggs and bring it to the house. Let go! The first thing you want to think about doing is think about the verbiage of the instructions that you were given. You were asked to intercept the radio at 180. Okay, cool. If you're flying to a VOR, but they gave you the radio, the radio, again, remains from. Things radiate from. Bearing down, radiate from. So you got to find a reciprocal. What is the two? If it's 180, the reciprocal of that is 360. So that's where you're going to be flying to. So you want to make sure you understand that first. Do that little quick map in your head. Just finding the reciprocal and you're good. And then boom, you're going to punch that thing in on your VOR. Find that 360. Get yourself in a nice position there. Immediately after you do that, 
You're going to see, of course, in the two section because you're going two. So you want to make sure that flag is in the two and you got the 360. Everything's punched in. You're going to see that needle start leaning to one of the sides. It's going to lead to the left or lean to the right. It's not going to be straight down the middle. And again, you haven't turned anything yet to make it straight down the middle. Everything is kosher. Everything is cool, baby. All you want to do at this point in time, you want to make sure that you're intercepting from the right angle. You know how when you enter the traffic pattern, it's always suggested that you try to enter that thing at a 45 degree angle? When you intercept that thing and you intercept that VOR, you also want to be intercepting it at a 45 degree angle. That's a very nice angle to intercept the VOR. So if you're intercepting the VOR radio we already at 180, we didn't already did the reciprocal. We got that punched in at 360. And of course, we want to intercept it at a 45 degree angle. How do we know if we're on a 45 degree angle? All we got to do is look at what side the needle is leaning to. It's leaning to the right. And then look on the VOR indicator, and they're going to be two little triangles, one on each side. That triangle is exactly at 45 degrees. The needle is leaning to the right. The triangle on the right indicates that that's a heading of 045. So what are we going to do? Go to our heading indicator, and we're going to fly 045. So we can intercept that thing at a 45 degree angle. Boom. Nice. So all we got, when we're doing that, we got our heading set, and we're moving along, you're going to start to notice that this needle it's no longer going to be to the side. It's going to start to move closer and closer and closer to the middle. And it's going to go from being on the side to then it's going to be nice and straight in the middle. And guess what? When it's done that, you have successfully intercepted the VOR. And then once it's straight up and down with 360, then you just turn your heading indicator, turn your plane to fly heading 360 and continue straight on to the VOR. Boom! If you ask to intercept a radio, you want to find the reciprocal of that so you can get that bearing down, put that bearing into your VOR, and then you want to find that 45 degree marker. And when you find that 45 degree marker, wherever heading it lands on, that's the heading you want to fly. And then you watch that needle do its thing until it get to the middle. And then when it's in the middle, then you start flying that, keeping it in the middle and start flying the appropriate heading to get on the VOR. That is how you intercept a radio. Lego. Like Tavon Diggs, intercept that thing and take it all the way to the house one time. Don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste, and this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free, fun videos about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Because I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swing it and bang it, that thing. Lego. Lay it one time.